Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. I've been getting a lot of folks asking me recently, for whatever reason, who's my favorite guest? What's my favorite episodes myself? I've been doing this for over five years, every single week, showing up and creating something special for you. And just thinking back on it, I realized that it wasn't necessarily special guests, but special moments. But if I was to be completely honest, my most special guest of all time is the person that I had to bring back for you today. Highly requested and somebody who's been there with me through it all, who's been a sounding board for all of my thoughts and my concerns, and somebody who's really helped me to up-level my game in so many different areas of my life, held me accountable, and also challenged me a lot. And our guest today is my wife, Ann Stevenson. And I'm really excited about this because we're gonna talk about some new stuff, all right? A lot of changes have happened in our lives recently and a lot of changes are, are coming. I've recently made a life switch myself, all right? I've changed up my schedule and this is because in the mornings I've been working on a project, something that I've been really wanting to do for a long time and I'm finally carving out the time and getting it done. And so I've switched to working out in the afternoon, which is new for me. I've been a morning exerciser for, you know, close to 20 years now, but I did take a time to do an experiment while Sleep Smarter was getting done to work out in the afternoon to just test it and to see the impact that it has on my sleep quality. Because in Sleep Smarter, I talk about how Appalachian State University found that morning exercisers tend to have better sleep. They tend to have more efficient sleep cycles. They tend to spend more time in the deepest, most anabolic stage of sleep. And they also tend to have about a 25% greater drop in blood pressure in the evenings which is correlated with turning off that fight or flight sympathetic dominance. So it's just stacked in favor of working out in the morning. But the reality is that's not always feasible for all of us. So what I've been doing is getting five minutes of exercise in the morning. I generally like jump on my mini trampoline, my rebounder for a while, maybe listen to a podcast or something like that. And then I get to work and then I'm getting to the gym in the early afternoon. So somewhere around 3, 30, 4 o'clock before I pick my son Braden up from school. And here's what I've been finding. Just changing my body clock in the time that I'm working out, I just wanted to introduce something and be more consistent with trying a pre-workout. And for me, I get surprised every single time that I use Shroom Tech Sport from on it. I just can't believe how good it actually makes me feel. And it's no like weird crash. I don't feel like out of my body and jittery and like weird crazy tingling, crazy sensations and things that tend to happen with some pre-workouts. But the reason I also love it is that they've done a double blind placebo controlled study on it. This is a gold standard of studies. And here's what they found. This was conducted at Florida State University. They did a 12 week clinical trial and they sought out to find the impact that Shroom Tech Sport actually has on your performance. And here's what they found. Taking Shroom Tech Sport, test subjects were able to increase their bench press reps by 12 percent. How much you bench, bro? Right off the bat, you're getting an increase there. Showing an increase combined bench press and back squat reps by 7%. So if folks are, you know, doing a little bit more glycolytic work, doing some supersets, but also strength training, you get a boost there. And it's also shown to increase cardio performance by 8.8%. Really remarkable stuff. And I love that on it really put their money where their mouth is and put this product in a double blind placebo controlled trial uh, with some highly reputable folks and getting this data back for us. And so I highly recommend checking them out, especially if you are in the market for a pre-workout or even pre-life really, you know, because it's from earth grown nutrients. It's based on cordyceps mushroom, which has been literally used for centuries and also compounds in there like EGCG, for example, which has some benefits with our energy, but also benefits with boosting fat burn as well. So really, really cool stuff. Pop over there, check them out, get yourself a bottle or two. It's onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. You get 10% off every single thing that they carry. All right, so pop over there, check them out. Onit.com forward slash model. And now let's get to the Apple Podcast Review of the Week. Another five-star review titled Eat Your Veggies by Arb Designer 247 I'm a new listener and about 20 episodes deep into this life-changing podcast, what I like about it the most is that each episode I gain new, very insightful knowledge on health and wellness. 
but also like that each episode coincides with each other. The information is not contradicting and has the same underlining approach to health. Thank you, Sean, for instilling these beliefs and principles into all of us. Best, Andrea from Alabama. Awesome. Eat your veggies. Thank you so much for leaving me that review over on Apple Podcasts, and I appreciate the acknowledgement. And it's just amazing how many folks are going back and listening to each and every show from episode number one, and thousands of folks are doing that um, every week, and it just really blows my mind, and just accumulating this knowledge. And also, I want to give a huge shout out to folks who go and listen to episodes again and really ingrain that stuff in your psyche. That's what I really began doing when I got into this space in the in the very beginning was I would find these lectures, I would find these different uh, summits that I would attend and I would get the recordings and I'd just listen to them over and over again until it really became a part of who I am. And so that's really remarkable and I appreciate that so much. And everybody, if you've yet to leave a review, please pop over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review for the show. It really means everything to me. And even no matter what platform you're on, whether it's Apple Podcasts, whether it's you're watching this on YouTube and hanging out in the studio with us, leave a comment, just share with folks what you think about the show, and I appreciate that. All right, and on that note, let's get to our special guest and topic of the day. My guest today is actually making me a little bit a little bit nervous, all right? I usually don't feel like this, but she's close to me right now, and like the, I'm just getting those feels, I'm getting all the feels, and it's my wife and my best friend, Ann Stevenson, and she was much requested to come back on the show, and these have been some of our most downloaded episodes, and so I'm really excited to talk with her. And what's different today that we've never done before, we just started. And guys, right now you need to do this. You're gonna pause this and go and get involved in this. We just started a private Facebook group for the Model Health Show listeners. It's called Model Nation. And this is a community where you can interact with other listeners of the show, meet new friends, talk about the shows, get bonus content from the show. It's really, really awesome. So many great people are there. And I asked the community because they knew first that Ann was coming on the show, what do they want me to ask her? And so I've got questions from the community that I'm gonna be asking her today as well. So pop over right now, go to themodelhealthshow.com forward slash model nation. All right, themodelhealthshow.com forward slash model nation. And you can get access, request access, answer the questions because this isn't for everybody. If you just kind of casually like the show, maybe you, you know, see me on Instagram, you're like, I like Sean's shoes. I'm going to follow him. If that's the reason you follow me, it's not for you. If you love the Model Health Show, this is for you, all right? I think you're going to really, really enjoy this. It's going to be a, one of those things that really adds value to your life. And so again, pop over there. It's themodelhealthshow.com forward slash model nation, together is one word, and you can request to join the community, all right? So with that said, let me get to the person who helped to create the community in the first place, my beautiful wife, Anne. What's up, baby? Hi, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly, I told you I'm in my feelings right I now. Know, I don't know why. I know, I have no idea. Usually it's the other way around. Usually I'm like super weird and nervous. I think I just like gave that off to you today. So, <laughs> Well, I'll take it. I want you to feel good. Yeah. I want you to feel relaxed. Yeah. yeah, I am. So thank you for coming back. I know it's always like, you know, I got to try to like, figure for you to get you to, to come back on the show. I know. <laughs> um, you continue to challenge me in many ways. And um, I'm learning not to resist anymore and just <laughs> go with the flow <laughs> for real. Because some some of the things you asked me to do, I just don't have any clue. But then later on, I listen or come across. I'm like, oh, OK, you knew what you're talking about. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> they say what you resist persists. I know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. The first thing I want to talk about, and we haven't really talked about this before, and you've been just experiencing a lot of insights and revelations yeah. from this experience. And I think it's going to be super valuable for folks because there's a lot of folks dealing with different flavors of it. But you're from Kenya. You know, mm -hmm. that's where you were born, born and raised in Kenya. That's, no, 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 I'm sorry. No. Babe, no. You don't know that song. <laughs> we did that. Right. Born and raised in Compton. <laughs> shout out to uh, DJ Quick. But born and raised, and you came here when you were 12. And I've known you for, like, we've been together for about 15 years. Yeah. And I know that it was a huge culture shock. And you went through a lot of different struggles adjusting. And some of that still carried over into our relationship even years later. And so let's just talk about that a little bit. Just when you got here, like, what was it like adjusting to the culture? Yeah, um, that 
it, it's funny. I think as you grow up, you you find how uh, the the past had so much more influence in like decisions today, and uh, back then when we before we we came to America, it was just such. Uh, exciting time we just thought this was just gonna be the best thing ever uh my sister and i would daydream all day like and we just talk about how you know the schools would be and i would sit next to a boy and uh back then i i i was going to all girls school so this was just so exciting and um the opposite happened when (laughs) we arrived um not only was it that because I was a cool kid I was the cool kid in my school so I went from that to being like who is that and and this was back in the day when there was no internet and thank goodness now having the internet I think people are more connected you get to see the other side of the world but back then I mean a lot of people in St. Louis like they've never met an African person so I, I I used to I, I would tell people and, and, and I wasn't joking I'm like for every dollar I had for somebody who would ask me how did you get here? Did you get here on a boat? And, I mean, and like, I'm um, so, yeah. see, and I, I was, I was confused because I'm like, I love Fresh Prince. Like, I, I'm in. <laughs> like, let's go. <laughs> like, like I know you guys. I, I, but, and also the other part was, even though Kenyan is a speak is an English speaking country, um, I didn't know anything about an accent that that's something different. And I would talk, and and it's like what are you saying? And I'm like, I'm speaking English. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and so it's like these small barriers and, um, learning that I am different uh, from, I got my first pair of jeans at Kmart. I thought that was the coolest thing ever. And, um, I had never had jeans before. And, and we're talking about, I come from a small, like the, I would say close to the slums area, like our house was half of this room and that includes our kitchen, bedroom, uh, my mom's bedroom and my, and my dad's and my sister and I lived, I mean, lived and I slept in the living room. That's where we live. And, but it was small and, but if you don't know any better, you just, yeah. this, this is, this is all you know. But then when you're exposed to something different and, and you're coming at 12, like preteen, it's an age where you're wanting to be accepted. So it's like with obviously with your friends and I mean, new friends and and all of that. So that was the challenging thing. So as most teens do, it's uh, you want to change your hair. I want to get the clothes that everybody else has. And obviously trying to talk like how everybody is, they talk. So um, my quickest way I knew was, let me get into some activity, a group, and I'm a fit in and they'll know I'm cool. And so ninth grade, eighth grade was horrible. Like, I mean, I didn't have a perm. My hair was huge. Uh, it was it was just, it was a disaster. So I, I felt redeemed. But you, not that you have a perm now. It's natural. <laughs> right, you right. But back then, you yeah. know, back then that was a thing. Yeah. And I remember first days of going to school is like, what's wrong with your hair? And, and they were genuinely asking because they have never seen anything like this. And for me, um, I think any, uh, we got a lot of listeners from all over the country, I mean, all over the world. And you can relate to this, those who are from other parts of the uh, world, when I say that we popularity didn't come from how you look. So our look, like I never really paid attention to how I look, Popularity came from being smart, like the Mm, smartest kid in the classroom was popular. So I thought that translated here, but it was like a whole new thing about looks. So it was just kind of like trying to catch up. And I thought the best way I'm going to try out for something. And in ninth grade, I tried out for a pom poms. And and at that time, it was like it just felt fresh, new like a fresh new star because it's high school and um, I got in, I got in, but this was for the next year. And so um, 10th grade happens and one, my sister goes to coach, my best friend, because again, this is a time where in eighth grade, uh, ninth grade, I'm, I'm trying to talk and be with friends and, and like, and, but then it's, it's really hard. So what would tend to happen is I wouldn't speak all day because I don't want them to know I'm different. And I remember specifically, I would come home with my sister and 
and she would say something and I'd be like, dang, I haven't spoken all day. And she's like, me neither. And it, it was good. At least there was somebody we were able to, you know, to talk to. And then she goes to college and 10th grade. I don't go back to that same school. I go to a different school because my mom, I thought we were moving, but we did it. And I'm like, all right, I'll just go to the school. Uh, I'll start over because now I got the clothes. My hair is good. And I'm starting to understand, the, you know, how to speak a little bit with a little bit of slang here and there. I'm like, okay, this is going to be good. And first day on the bus, um, which, by the way, where I lived was, uh, I think you talked about this before, the DSAC program where the kids yeah. in the city um, get bus to the good school. Yeah. And I ended up in, the, in, that, in that bus, but I didn't live in the city. I lived in between, <laughs> not in the city, right not in the edge. good, in the edge. And um, apparently the kids were so upset that they had to get off the highway to come get me. And first day I walk into the bus and... And nobody went, wanted me to sit with them. It's like that Forrest Gump scene. Yeah. Can't yeah. sit here. I know. <laughs> Seat's taken. Right, right, <laughs> right. So every say, somebody's pretending to sleep. Somebody's like, no. <laughs> and I, I mean, wow. until like I would just stand there and then somebody would feel bad for me and sit. And that went on for every day for three years until I graduated. Like, it, you know, this is how you start the day off. And I was like, okay. That's cool. I'm gonna let me let let me find a um, activity to join. I I tried out for the pom poms. Maybe that will I, I can fit in. And so I tr I end up trying out, and uh, again that was a disaster because this was like high level. Yeah. I mean there was doing splits and all, but I I would try my best. You know uh, with the tryout tape. Every, every day I would do all my little steps and everything. But I knew I was bad. Honestly, I was really bad. But, oh, I, no, no. <laughs> but I love to dance. I loved yes. to dance. And in hindsight, Brayden loves to dance, right? And I thought, you know, I'm just going to give it my best shot. And it was like 15 girls. Everybody tried out. And I guess I was so bad. It, me and another girl, we were so bad. Like everybody made it but us too and so the coach had to pull us out of the room and tell us like you guys didn't make it like you know th this is it and i was crushed i didn't know how bad like i was really crushed and since that day all i did was i went to school and i came back home i didn't i didn't speak my lunches i didn't have any friends so i would go eat my lunch in the library you know just so i can just be <laughs> in the backdrop like I just don't want to interact and I tried my best supposedly and and that and it is what it is so needless to say I think with the culture shock and um the adjustment it it looked like this was gonna like have a bad ending obviously we know it's not a bad ending so <laughs> for those I know when I told my sister this story she was just um she just was so emotional and I was like, but that's okay. Everything ended up being good. But I, I feel like a lot of people have similar stories, but it's just kind of like how we interpret it and using those trials and tribulations later on, like to make us stronger. Yeah. Hey, um, so obviously people that see you and know you now, they have no idea because right. you know, a lot of times people <laughs> see people and just like, man, they got it made, Yeah. you know, and they just, they're blessed. They happen to, like you just must have came from that. But we don't hear these kind of stories. Like you really went through it. And we've dealt with so many issues. You know, there's another thing with our cultures, you know, like in your family um, and even just in your culture in general, you know, there's no public displays of affection. Like you yeah. never saw your mom and no. dad. And so I'm coming, I'm coming around, like put my arm around yeah. you, by, around your mom and you like move into the side no, a little. No, that years. You know? It, I, even our wedding, like I feel so awkward kissing you. Like I, that was so <laughs> awkward to me. I just wanted to be over because, you know, my parents are right there. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. <laughs> but, so that yeah. aspect and also um, just the adjustments and even how, how we talk, you know, because... I'm, I'm more aggressive, you know, yeah. like I come from a very aggressive, which people don't know that now because it's, it's very, uh, it's very controlled. But in my house, like if there's a problem, you yell, I know. right? What are you doing? 
You know, you just start yelling. <laughs> and so when we first got together, like I, I would just be loud, but it wasn't necessarily a problem. It's yeah. just like, and in your mind, it's like, why is he so loud? You know, why, why does he keep getting loud? And then also, of course, when we would have a problem, you know, it tends to be that way. And so what you would do is, you know, just kind of really play the background. You would really like draw, draw censor back. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's so cool is I, um, the other day, well, I, I want to say it's been like a month now. I happened to open um, in the morning because, you know, just picking up whatever book. And sometimes, which thankful to you, I actually, I, I'm, I'm okay with not reading an entire book because I guess sometimes I'm not going to get through it. But if I can just get a message or something from the book, I, that's meant for me. You know, it is what it is. And I edited an opening. Um, it's Girl, Stop Apologizing. Just a random page. And I just read that page. And, um, and, and uh, Rachel said something like, you know, stop. You're not that same 10th grade girl. Um, you, you Stop. Stop acting like you're still, still that small girl back in the day. And I just closed the book and I was so emotional. Like mm. everything just like flashed all like in. And um, it took me back and it just, all the pieces came together. Yeah. And I realized anytime that I am faced with a challenging situation, anytime that I'm pushed and I don't want to be pushed or conflict, I do revert to that small girl, that 10, 10th grade girl yeah. who got denied, who failed, who tried and I failed, who um, just wanted to fit in. And, and thus all these things made me small. And so anytime um, somebody would say something that might seemingly attack me and make me so, seem small, that made me angry because in reality, it's like, I kind of feel that way. I do feel small. And, and, I look young. I, even though I'm much older, I look young. But then there's that part of me is like, you are small. Don't try, <laughs> you know, mm. and 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 go and and pushing myself back. And uh, the other day when we had like life changing news of, um, you know, we're moving, and everything was official. You were excited. You were just yeah. like over the moon. And I was like, yay. I think I even gave you one of those <laughs> Oprah hip. <laughs> right. Terrible high five. <laughs> Terrible high five. Right, right. And we was at an Airbnb. I like got up and I'm oh, like. Oh, man. He was shaking the plants. And I didn't like, shake. I like, I just hit oh, a plant. Yeah. And then the plant, plant just fell over yeah. at this Airbnb all this. house. And just all the little internal <sighs> plant crumbs went everywhere. It was crazy. And for me. I froze. I froze. Mm. I I started just to feel really bad. And um, so it's I so know, crazy right? to me. Right. Yeah. Because again, these are the root issues of my certainty. And in past episodes, we've talked about uh, my uncertainty. I mean, my certainty needs and being met. And when I have uncertainty, how that really like just... It just makes me, you know, it, it's a really bad place for me. And I froze. And I just started making up all these excuses and problems that, you know, hadn't. And, and you told me, like, can we even celebrate for 10 minutes? Really? And I was like, wow. And all of a sudden I was like, and I told you, I was like, I'm just scared, you yeah, know? Yeah, you did. Because, and that was the first time that it all came together. Like, you know what? You're just scared. Mm. And it's okay to say it. And, I, and it felt good after I said it. Yeah. I was, I felt more comfortable in just being happy in that little celebration. Yeah. And yeah. That's, I mean, this very evolved from where you were because right. you wouldn't share what was going on in your inner mm -hmm. world. And by the way, there were no plants harmed in the making of that <laughs> excitement. It was a fake plant. All right. And I was like, why is this even here? Um, anyways, so after I cleaned it up and then we talked and you shared that, and it just really, again, it surprised me. Because, and I'm not one of those big celebration guys. I'm just, no, you know, like, I'm just kind of like, I really am on to the next thing. But now in learning from different people that have been in our lives that have been on the show, folks like Michael Hyatt, for example, who tends to be a little bit more like me, but he's been in it for many decades, you know? And so he's somebody I look to and he talked about giving time for celebration. Mm. And so after we worked so hard to get all those pieces done, I yeah. was like, yes, like... This is, and it's closing tabs, which you like to close tabs. Right. You know, but you have a lot of tabs open, literally <laughs> and figuratively. <laughs> but for you and what I want to talk about is, you know, you when you opened up and you shared that 
And because there's a lot of folks that are, we think that we are making decisions from the person we are today. No. But especially when stressful or difficult stuff comes up, we tend to revert back to that 10th grade person or to that 21 year old person right. who was in that one relationship that really hurt them or to, you know, the childhood when you're seven years old and, you know, um, you were punished for something that you didn't do or whatever it is, we revert back to those, those channels in our minds. Right. And right. so what was it for you? Like, how have you gotten to the place where in those moments you can actually see like, okay, this is what's going on right now. I'm responding like this and I can actually choose to talk about it or do something different. I think, I think first of all, like when you say that a lot of times those negative, it's, it's a negative feeling to be honest. And we know we don't want to feel this way. I knew I don't want to feel this way though. I I'd never really dug into it, but if I can just, if I can recognize it, which was such a huge awakening, because I felt it was just dormant. And like you said, I think a lot of those things are just dormant in a lot of us. But just when you shine the light and you truly self-assess and you just start looking at all the decisions like, oh, that's why I was angry. It wasn't the cup, you know, mm. you know, or whatever it was that I feel like is half the battle. And then from there, I think it's just that. um self-reflection and and also being okay when it when you do when you don't pass the test at yeah, the fa first yes, time yeah. and, and like i did like i knew when it was happening because that are like that would have been a bigger argument to be honest like you had been working you'd been doing all these amazing things and now this was the time everything's moving towards the right direction and then we just got this news and then here I go with my feelings and how all these problems and like, but you don't know. And just to stop back, like, you know, I know, I know what's going on here and I should have realized it sooner. And, but, but you know, it doesn't matter. Let me just say right now, because the truth is I'm just scared. I do like my little certainty. I just want to come home. <laughs> if my mom was here, she would say, come home and have my little milk and cookies and watch my little shows, you know, do my homework. I just want my little safe place. But um, yeah, so. Now, we talked about this on past episode, which we'll put this in the show notes, but we talked about our driving forces and it was totally transformational for us in our relationship because you know, love, there's there's two distinct phases and, pe and some people have a better transition. And so they don't really realize yeah. like, and those are like the star star relationships where you transition from this in love feeling to actually real love, mm. which real love is intentional. It's like, I literally, I choose to love you. Whereas when you're in love in the beginning, like you just, I feel like I can't help the way I feel. I just love her. I just want to be around movies. her, you know? <laughs> and it's, it's real, like you really do feel it. But then when you transition, especially after you've been around somebody, because I mean, and I've shared this before, there was a time when I think we were together for like a year and a half. And I literally said to you, I was like, <laughs> I don't think I could ever be mad at you. And I said it like that too. It's like mad at you, you know? Cut to a few months no, no, later. But, but in my head, I'm like, yeah, right. I'm already, I was already annoyed by so many things, but I just kept it hidden. <laughs> I just kept it hidden because yeah. again, I was just this small voice. I'm just going to suppress everything that I'm feeling. I'm just going to keep it low. And you said that it just, that didn't make sense. I'm like, everything's not all right, but okay. <laughs> and see, uh, guys, these are all news to me as well. You know, when I hear these things, <laughs> but you know, we had got to that place where, you know, we were very much working on ourselves, but we were working in different directions in a sense, mm. many times. And we did come together in our mission and, and mutual love of like helping people and helping people yeah. feel good and to be healthy and to be happy. And you did that from a the component of like social, mm -hmm. right? And just chopping it up with people. I did it yeah. from the more teaching aspect. Yeah. And, but then we got to a place where we really didn't even... You know, and you shared this with me, which I was so grateful you said it. Cause like you just said just now, like you was annoyed with stuff, you know, I don't come out and just be like, but you know, you would be coming home. And if you see my car in the driveway, you'd be like, oh God, right. here we go. And I, when you told me that I was like, I feel the same way <laughs> when I see you're at home, just because I just want to do my thing and you do your thing. And then we'll come together sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, maybe mm -hmm. hang out, go to a movie or something. And, but it was very much like we were we were 
kind of friends, you know? No, I mean... I mean, loose friends, really. <laughs> <laughs> but we loved each other. We yeah. loved each other. It was just a different flavor of it. And we had kind of lost connection because of just, and, and people talk about this, but communication and understanding what you really needed and what I needed. And so and this is the big thing for everybody is like, if you want to be good at, because we didn't have examples. We never saw a healthy relationship. No, we already thought ever. we were killing it, yeah. which we were compared to what we saw. And so for us to really learn how can we have a great relationship, you have to study it. You have to find out. And so we invested. We got that uh, Tony Robbins program. I believe it's yeah. called Lovers for Life. And then he introduced us to this concept of our the six human needs, yeah. right? And we, you know, again, we'll put that in the show notes, but understanding you were really your number one driving force is certainty. And for me, that was a lower on my rung. I was more of a, you know, growth and love, very much driven by love. We met there because we both had like love is like our number two yeah. driving force. And so if I'm driven by growth and you're driven by certainty, I'm going to be taking risk and doing stuff that you're not going to feel certain about. Right. And we get into it because I'm feeling like, you know, you're not with me. Like we, don't you see where we're going? And so just understanding this and wanting to make adjustments because now it's like, oh, it's a different language she's speaking. She's speaking a different language. She's motivated from a different place. Let me do my part to address that need. And you did the same thing for me. That is so, I, and I know you've said this numerous times on um, the show and it, it cannot be stressed enough about making it a study of relationships. We already know relationships are like the biggest component in, in like influencing, but like, what does that mean? For example, I mean, I come from a different background, matter of fact, a different culture, a different everything. And so, so do you. So it's like, I mean, even driving here, you told, you shared with me a story. I've been with you 15 years. Yeah. I had never heard before. And yet it's like when you have two people and you we decide to live together and all these things, there's so much we need to learn about the other person. Yeah. And, and be, having the willingness to do that is really important and it actually ends up being fun and the more you share obviously creating that space because even to share those stories with you earlier on I had to feel safe I had to feel that I mattered so obviously creating those and then being able to share these things in in that space and learning continuously studying even right now yes I thought that with the Tony Robbins stuff we had that like okay we got that handled then now reading the five love languages is, and it's yeah. just like a whole new different perspective and then we're talking about it and realizing like my number first of all I, I was like I don't know what my love language is which later on you discovered is because yeah. <laughs> my love tank is full yeah yeah <laughs> it was just I so was just true happened to be doing so it, true you know? so true but quality time and this spoke so that's my biggest one and um it made so much sense because whenever I, I remember there was a week where you were just so busy, just working, working, working. And I'm a talker. I I just I talk all day, guys. I just, that's what <laughs> I do. <laughs> and I couldn't talk. And I'm like, C can I? And you just was like, not right, not right now. And all that did was at the end of the week, like we ended up having like the most silliest argument. But it was so intense because I didn't get my time with you just to like... Because working out is different because it's just we're working out and, and I don't even think we worked out together that week yeah. either. So yeah. it was just like I needed time with you just to tell you some random thoughts in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember like you would like start to open you'd be like, hey, bah. and then you would <laughs> right. stop yourself like you was just really. And it wasn't <laughs> like I'm just like, get away from me. Not now. It wasn't. It was more yeah. like, babe, we talked about this. You know, I'm just trying to focus on this so I, we could, you know, do us. But it's it's not just the quality time, uh, you know, just being together. Because the thing, we're together a lot, but mm -hmm. it's actually me focusing on you. Yes. And actually listening to you. And, you know, you do have a lot to share. And that is another big change, too. And I want to talk about this next because I can't negate the fact that that revelation and your ability to see mm -hmm. the, the turbulence in your mind, for, for you to actually be aware that, okay, it's fear that's happening right now. This is why I'm not feeling this. Is I think you recently took some time away and you still continue to do this uh, from social media. And I, I know some people, 
out there have had this experience. Like, I didn't get remarried, but I felt like <laughs> there's a new person in my relationship just by you not being on social media. Like, you started to become this motivational force in my life like very aggressive like you was, i it? said it today like what? you i call you et you know you just come just like all right this is what we're gonna do let's go you know this and i'm just like whoa 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. you know but you just you just became this well of okay. ideas and insights and you really start to see how social media can uh, affect our minds. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think it was like the end of September. I knew I was going to do it. And it's been it had been looming in my head for a couple of months before I did it. And, um, and I was just like, there's, there was a lot. I mean, because this year there's so many big moves. There's so many big changes that are happening. And I knew in order to get here, the, like my mind needs to be sharp. And I need to be focused. And um, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it next month. But I didn't say anything to you guys because I already knew. Uh, uh, you, you know, it's like, come on, like, that's too extreme. And so finally at the end of this, uh, September, I, um, I was like, okay, I think I'm going to do this. I'm going to. And the final straw was I was on my phone and Brayden was trying to get my attention. Yeah, son, Brayden. And, uh, and he said, but you're, you're always on your phone. Like, why are you on your phone? Because he's so good about calling us out, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. And it's nothing important. Mm -hmm. I'm not working. I'm just scrolling. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do this. But I knew in order, because I have done these changing my habits in the past, I know the first step is really having a deep why, something that's going to root me in, that's going to make me feel like, okay, this is going to be long term. Because I feel a lot of times, and that's a funny thing. Now I see everybody's like, and I used to say the same thing too. You know, social media, it's not the real world, but you're in it. You're, you're, you're still participating, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? And and it's great. And and I'm not I'm not gonna bash because I love IG. Like it's the best ever. Facebook IG, it's okay. I, I don't know, but IG is amazing. Everybody has their flavor, right? Okay. I understand. As you were saying, right. and, <laughs> and I mean, we get to connect with so some so many amazing people, um, deep in relationships. Because yeah. you know, sometimes you might meet somebody in person, but then you start to like follow each other and yeah. and and start to communicate more and find out you love you like the same things. So in that aspect, yes, I got to deepen some relationships um, and all that great stuff. But I was like, okay, I need to find a deeper why. My deeper why was parenting. You know, parenting. Um, I don't think nobody realizes this, but I, and and I'm pretty sure there are gonna be studies coming out soon about this. Yeah. But the truth is, this is the first era of parenting with a device. Yeah. You know, and and I just started to sit back and I'm like, wow, I remember when I used to breastfeed Brayden and I would just sit there and breastfeed and just look at him. Or you remember going to the playground and we just sit there, and we look at them. Right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we just sit there I haven't and even look thought about him. that. Right? <laughs> Which is I would just go sit there and look at him. But now it was just like something that always is in my hand and to look down and, and get yeah. distracted. And um, and it's like, what are we actually doing here? And if obviously our children are going to be part of this generation with these devices, and even though everybody, even if you go on social media, we're talking about how we need to connect and we need to get off social media is this and that. But who's actually doing it? Like who's actually doing it? And how can we teach our kids to do it? Because I cannot teach Brayden how to maneuver with this device because, again, it's not about being away from the world. It's being of this world but and, and how to train him to do it. But I need to know how to do it yeah. and, and, and not being consumed with it. So, so that was, that was my main motivating force is at some point he will have a phone at some point he will want to have social media, but like the mind and the strategies of doing that was super important. And then I looked at my mentor parents. I, I, I think every, every parent should have mentoring, um, parents that they look up to. I look at my mom, um, uh, my sister, my grandmother, um, I love Shalene and I love how she's raised 
two amazing individuals. And I look at these kids and it's like they are doing amazing. My nieces are doing amazing. I turned out well, I think, (laughs) you know, and I was just like, okay, well, I need to. There's something here. Obviously, they didn't have social media like they wasn't on social media like that back in the day because you have so many things you're doing. And um, and and so it's just like looking at my mentoring parents, like what did they do back in the day? And I want to do the same thing. And so it's like so I just did it where it's like I um, I did it for 30 days, but I coupled it. And actually, I had our fat loss code group. We, um, I challenged them. Plus I needed accountability because if I say it, I said it to you guys, but I didn't want to like seem like I'm hiding it or whatever. So I also posted it there and anybody wanted to join me. And I called it habit detox because I coupled it with, um, doing like a small, uh, fasting and and um a, like a new workout routine so because i found i guess when you're anchoring a new habit like when you have some other things together it really helps mm. and and then also on top of that when you're super serious and you found this is you'll attract books and podcasts and all these things about that particular topic. So I ended up uh, just reading some amazing books. Uh, one of them was Willpower Doesn't, Won't, Won't Work by Benjamin Hard- Hardy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. So I get sent a lot of books, obviously, like a yeah. lot of books yeah. by publishers. And I never, I didn't of, crack into it. Right. You just picked it up. Yeah. And just, I'm just like, what are you doing? I know. And you know, I'm not. You've I, like, never I don't done read. that before. No, no. Yeah. And it just spoke perfectly to what I was going through. Because again, willpower literally doesn't work. How many, like, I remember the first few days when I was off, like I, t- I deleted it off my, my, my phone. And then I, I uploaded, there are many apps where you can see how many times you're picking up your phone and all of that good stuff. And you can block yourself from all these places. And I knew, obviously, I have the the Facebook group. I do have, you know, we do have this group. So I, I just put it on my um, bookmark on my computer and only would access it on the computer just to go in there and, commu- you know, and communicate with, with our members and all that good stuff. And, and then I'll, and I'll be out. And, and plus I would monitor and have like a monitoring. And then every single day I would post my, um, my, t- my time, like my time sheet to the group so that they can see what I was, you know, like, yeah, I'm not cheating out here mm-hmm. <laughs> on being on my device. But it was so hard. First few days, it was hard because it's like you just pick up your phone and you scroll to that app and, and you go there and it's not there. It's the craziest thing. Mm. And it's like, there's a willpower. It literally doesn't work. It's like, if you're trying to be healthy, you take out all the junk food out. Hey, I mean, it's the same thing. And mm. and like, we can't say, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to go there. We just will. We just will. And then you go into that rabbit hole. You're going to check something and, you know, you're in there for a long time. But this is what I want to say, though. Another deeper thing is dreaming. You know, when we first got started even before when you were coaching and the model health show wasn't even like a thing, we had time to just sit there and think about what we want to create, how that looked like, what our relationship looks like. But now when we have access to all this, seeing everybody what they're doing, it's great. I feel it's like great as a small inspiration. But when we get inundated in it, like we're so much in it, I think it just starts to affect like our dreaming state, like like a young entrepreneur. Uh, can you imagine like back in the day when you were speaking in my mom's uh, kitchen and then you're going back online and you seeing that it's like, man, the other person, like they just got this book deal. You know, yeah, it, it takes more mental work to like get your mind right and get back in the game because we're not dreaming anymore. And when we dream, we're dreaming about somebody else's stuff. Yeah. It's it's in our it's it's in our psyche. So I wanted to get back to dreaming again. Like what are my goals for real? Like and what does that actually look like? I can get inspiration, no doubt. I wanna see it. I I, I, I want to but I want to just step a, take a step back and and dream more and and, and work on my dreams. Mm. 
Wow. And that's what you've been doing. It, you just showed me today, you came across an old journal yeah. from 2010 and you wrote five goals. And the first one had to do with us and our marriage. And this is before any of this has happened. <laughs> like, I literally, I'm obsessed with you now, you know, yeah. just like, and it wasn't that I wasn't obsessed with you. I was just like trying to hide from you a little bit. <laughs> but now it's just like the, the things that you wrote out have actually come to fruition in so many different areas, you know, even with, you know, our the, the career and the impact and all that stuff. And it's so amazing. The power of writing things down, dreaming, like you said, and listening to your heart, because that's what you wanted, not what somebody else wanted for you or said right. you should have. And today more than ever, so we need to have this balance because again, the social media is connecting us. And I'll put in the show notes, an episode I did for eliminating distraction. It was like a masterclass on that and different ways to kind of modulate and handle social media. And so this is why like, we've even created uh, the Model Nation, right? this private group. And so that I can be more strategic and specific where I spend my time yeah. because my time is chunked. And you know, I get like thousands of messages, you know, from, you know, from email to social media, all those inboxes. And, you know, we had to hire a couple of people to help with them, but still it's just so much. And I never thought that, I didn't think that that would ever be a thing. Right. But what I do is, and just shout out to everybody who sends me messages and leaves comments. I get to as many as I can every day. Like I'll take some specific time because I've been more strategic in it because I get, used to get lost in it. And I just want to reply to everybody. And my inbox is always full. And I get to like five and then get replaced by 10. But, you know, please continue to do that because I w I'm still there. I'm still paying attention, but it's on a strategic time so that it doesn't pull me away from dreaming and helping to create things that I can actually give to everybody. Because one of the things people hit me up a lot about is like, hey, do you have this topic? Have we done, talked about this? And so I want to create those things, but I can't do them if I'm like spending hours a day on social media. Right. And so again, a great place to connect on this platform and to talk about more with the Model Health Show and about health and wellness and just being the best version of yourself, definitely go to themodelhealthshow.com forward slash model nation. nation. All right, model <laughs> nation. And I'm definitely there a lot more and showing showing my face and even asking the question about for today. And I yeah. want to get to that next, unless you have something else to share. I Because I, I, I didn't, I, maybe I should give a few tips for those who do want to do a social media detox. Yes, let's I, do it. I, I do think um, one of the first thing that they can do, obviously, is having the why. Uh, secondly, is utilizing, all, like there's so many different apps of actually like monitoring your time, even if you're not going to get off, just facing the truth. I remember when I first said I was going to do it or, and, and I told some other, like a few people and, and they would be like, dang, I didn't know like it was that bad. And I'm like, I'm like, it's not that bad. But the thing is, we don't realize how much time we're wasting and on the, on, on these things. And, and the truth is we're here to be more productive and a lot of people are doing busy work when stuff is hard. What do we do? We just grab our phone for a minute. Like if we if we need to be in an intense thinking process, we're grabbing it. When we need to do the hard thing, we're going to grab we're going to grab the phone. But now you have time to self-assess. And so finding out how first how much time you're spending on there. Being for real. And then obviously there are many apps. I know I Instagram has one where you can even block yourself out. for. You can give yourself 30 minutes just for the entire day and seeing how that works. 10 times out of 10, you'll see how much productivity you have. But most importantly, also your mental, your mental state on like anxiety and feeling depressed because it's, I mean, I, I've spoken to so many amazing individuals who are doing so many amazing things out here. And they all say the same thing. It's like they feel they're amazing and they think, they think they're dope. And then you go on there and you leave there feeling less amazing. <laughs> and let's be honest, that explore page looks like spam. S seriously, we should just like just not like let's, let's get away from that <laughs> explore page. Um, then the other thing is what are your actual goals? What are actual goals during this time and and filling it with something of equal or greater value that's going to make you more productive and happy and and also just time for just a deep self-assessment 
and being okay with being lonely. I think that's the part which a lot of people we are um, experiencing right now is just that feeling of being lonely. And it's okay because I think from that self-assessment, then we're able to make better decisions when we get back on the platform. It's not a, it's not a matter of not being on there. It's a matter of first creating a habit, a healthy habit. So when you do get back on there, because what I do is just like every at the end of each 30 days, I'll just get on there for a day or two and check messages or connect or whatever. But now I found that even, even if I do have it on my phone, I never even go, I never swipe on there. But my reasons are different. And if I post now, you're more conscious on what I want to add to this because it's a lot of pseudo inspiration on 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 these platforms and what can I add of value and you get to think deeper on what I can share as opposed to just I'm gonna just share a workout and see me working out I mean it's like a million people working out is that all you got to offer like what else can you actually share that can help just even one person to be better today and I love what we do with the boys and like I love that message when somebody said that, you know, it just made the it made their day when they saw our boys being goofy, like they must they were having a bad day. Something small like that. It's great, but it can't be the end all be all of your your day. So Wow. Pseudo inspiration. See, listen guys. I these, never said that. Actually. Yeah, these <laughs> jewels, like this is like not what historically the things that you drop, you know. And you've always been insightful and inspirational for me and, you know, really kind of my coach in a sense, but it's much more subtle. You've really just moved forward in that and being much more vocal um, because there's a difference between you being a talker and like you saying something. Right. And you have true. so much to say. And it like literally correlated with you getting off social media, which was crazy to me. Like I caught it was about two Two to three days later. Because the first day was a lull. You yeah, know, you still had First of all, he habit. didn't believe in me, guys. He did not believe yeah, I could do yeah, it. He true. was just like, it's you're true. being extreme. You just, you know, just do it for a couple of days. I'm like, no. I either go in or I go out. And and I, nobody believed me. Jordan, our other son, did not believe me. And they were like, you're cheating. You know, it, it was funny. He kept <laughs> on saying how I'm cheating. So, no, I wasn't cheating. <laughs> well, the, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. And, oh, first, what proof is in the pudding? Let's not even, <laughs> never mind, never mind. <laughs> anyway, so I think this is a good opportunity to kind of chop it up and go through some of the questions that we sure. did receive from Model Nation. And it's, I'm interested to hear some of the stuff. One of the things folks were asking, several different people in Model Nation in the community we're asking like, what are some books that Anne is reading? What does she recommend? And so you've already hit like three, like you hit the five love languages, you hit um, willpower, willpower doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, most recently, the book that you crushed was, uh, we're gonna need more wine, is that? Yeah. Is that Gabrielle need, Union? Yeah, Gabrielle Union. I love that book. Um, Cause again, we have enough inspiration and things that we need to do and the how to do's that are out there, which I'm completely obsessed with self-development. But sometimes we need a like a slight break, just a slight break to just chill out and process, you know, all the information that I just I just learned. Um, so that's and um, what's another book? Everyday Enlightenment by Dan Millman. Mm. That's a really, really great book. Um, and Dan Millman's been on the show, yes. which was, guys, when we talk about moments, how I started I the know. show, it was one of my favorite moments because he's had such an impact on my life. Like, I remember going to see, there's a movie made about his first book, well, his first big book, uh, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. It's a movie mm -hmm. called The Peaceful Warrior. And so he's been on the show. We'll put that in the show notes for you. And wow, yeah, such a good, good experience. Yeah. And of course, I cannot forget, uh, Girl, Wash Your Face was just phenomenal, like, from front to back like just just incredible and now i'm reading girl apologizing well i haven't started yet but like i just opened up that random page but i can't wait to dig into that one as well um so I, yeah that's pretty much yeah. the ones that i can say girl stop apologizing and by the way yeah. so when you're reading oftentimes uh what do you call me when i bring your coffee garçon 
my gar. She says I'm I'm her garçon. <laughs> all right. So this is true. So I'm yeah, a barista. She yeah, has a barista you, you're in the house. You're very good. Yeah, it's just coffee. I, I do night, my it's job not well. the same. It doesn't taste the same. <laughs> And so for us, and you're the one who really got me to drink coffee. You didn't drink coffee like no. in our entire relationship for like 12 years up until that point until we got four Sigmatic. And then you tried it because I was like, well, you know, because I was doing the elixirs, you know, the cordyceps and chaga. I've been doing that stuff for years, but now I got it from somewhere that does a dual extraction. I was pumped. And you know, it, like my, we have the superfood cabinet, right? And it's all yeah. these tinctures and pills. And I was like, put a alcohol extract into the smoothie and then like <laughs> open pills up and put it in. They did both of them together. I loved it so much, but I would have the, the elixirs alone. So like cordyceps and lion's mane and chaga. And then I was like, well, somebody should probably try this coffee out. And so you tried the coffee and then you had it again and again. <laughs> and it just seemed like you were having such a good time and I wanted to be a part of it. So I tried the coffee because I just wasn't a coffee drinker. And it, I've never looked back. Like, and the thing is, like, all the people that have those weird experiences that I've heard about and seen even clinically over the years. You remember the the client we had who came from Malaysia yes. who was like drinking eleven cups of coffee a day or whatever. No, and he had like these, like he thought he was dying. You no, know, the doctors couldn't figure it out, and yeah, you know he would have these spasms. He was good, like within a couple of days. Like we just swapped out the coffee you know it's like this isn't rocket science but just seeing people with those kind of feelings we never well, i've never experienced that uh period because you know four sigmatic is my go-to and so uh today i made you the lion's mane coffee mm. which is organic coffee first of all so you're not getting pesticides with your cup i'm not bringing my wife a hot cup of pesticides here you <laughs> go here's a little bit of endocrine disruptors and so we've got that as the base but also lion's mane is in there as well chaga too for the kind of immunomodulating factors, but lion's mane, University of Malaya uh, recently discovered that lion's mane contributes to uh, neurogenesis, literally cr the creation of new brain cells. And also it's been found to be very neuroprotective. Specifically, they've been studying it for helping with symptoms of traumatic brain injuries and healing the brain. So it's really, really powerful, really awesome stuff. And apparently you <laughs> really like it. Uh, because, and, and you got to share people with, like the actual, like, what do you put in this coffee? It's so good because I had to tell one of uh, my friends, shout out Jalisa, I know you're listening, is uh, how you make it. Because when she first had it, she was like, ah, it's all right. Then I had to tell her, like, I had to take pictures of everything that actually goes in there. Can you share? Sure, sure. So first of all, foursigmatic.com forward slash model. That's F-O-U-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model. You get 15% off everything that they carry. And so Jaleesa grabbed her some and yes. we hooked her up with some some extra goodies too. But she's going from Starbucks to the regular, <laughs> you know, like True. <laughs> some people do the straight hitter. They do the yeah. straight coffee and that's all good. You know, some people, they get the black. They get that, let me get that black bean uh, extract. Let me get that. But uh, other folks, the coffee is really, it comes along with, the sugar and the butter, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, would you like some coffee with your sugar and butter, basically, because it's just that stuff. And so the way that we make it generally and today was we do MCT oil mm -hmm. from Onnit, yes. the emulsified MCT oil. And today it was the uh, almond latte flavor, which is really great. We do some grass-fed butter mm -hmm. usually. And we also do a, a few drops Harry's of- gold, yeah. grass-fed butter. Also do a few drops of English toffee stevia is really is really pretty delicious. And I like to add cinnamon too, so I'll throw some cinnamon in there. Cinnamon is powerful antioxidant. It's got some factors for helping to regulate your blood sugar and it just tastes good, you know. So that's really how I do it. That's the formula, the basic formula. We might tweak it here and there, add some different stuff, but that's how we do it. So I think you'll really, really love it, whether whether you like the straight coffee jump off or you like to dress your coffee up in cute outfits uh pop over there check them out foursigmatic.com forward slash model 15 percent off let's get into some of these questions from model nation all right so one of the questions asked for you my love my <laughs> bestie is what is one of the biggest things that you have gleaned 
from your relationship with me? So, you know, I had to ask you what Glean was because I was like, <laughs> simple girl. Oh, um, I is really super simple. Um, confidence. Like I went from, again, you heard my story earlier, like from being this small, timid girl, even though I was like in a grown woman's body, mm. just very not wanting to ruffle feathers, not wanting to speak up. Um, because I mean, literally from not wanting to hear my voice, I didn't want to hear my voice. I didn't want other people to hear my voice to, to now actually even obviously sitting here, um, and seeing your confidence in everything that you've done from when I, nobody believed in you. But yourself initially, because I was like, he all right, but I don't know if he's like the best nutritionist in the world. I don't know. And that, but it's like the confidence you had, it was undeniable. And it was like, how did you even develop that? Like, that is so nuts to me. But being around you and just kind of like picking that up here and there, and obviously you challenging me. Um, that's been a game changer for me because whenever I think I have it handled and like, you know, okay, we got this, then you come along with something else and you're always pushing the envelope in yourself and me too. And, but in turn, it just, it turns into more confidence and, um, and obviously from loving me, just that that's always a bonus. Mm, wow, I love that. When you said in a grown woman's body, I almost cried. Like tear, I had to hold my tears back. <laughs> like, yes, it's, it's true. Um, so the other question that went along with it is, what was one of the biggest things you struggled with, with me dealing with slash adjusting to me? You have such a um, big vision and you are a creator. I think like those people who have partners who are artists or they just are a constant creator, like it's like a different uh, breed. Like you have to wear special gloves. <laughs> 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 Gotta put you, you know, to handle. Um, and it takes a study. It's been taken a study to find out what your needs are because you are a creator. You, you love to create. Um, and I can assist with that or I can <laughs> demolish you. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's been, has been very challenging over the years to, to learn, to learn that dance on, okay, he's doing this now. Like, when should I intervene in doing this? And like your, your attitude for certain things and the energy, because you're big on energy as well. So it's, it's, it's initially was figuring out because, you know, again, we talked about this in the beginning with being in love. You just, we're in love, but like to love somebody, it's going out of my way and figuring out what do you really need and want? Let me, let me take myself out of the equation because initially I was like, so what? So what? You needed some quiet time. You know, you got to go to the, just fix it, fix your mind and go, you know? And and not really caring what <laughs> stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> the truth will set you free. I love it. Come on. Oh, uh, but but that's because like I needed to care more about what you were caring more on. Mm, yeah. And and then not only that and going an extra step on like how can I actually help you? Yeah. And it can be like from the small things of having your meals ready to let me <laughs> put push push away Brayden like I'm gonna take care of Brayden while you're figuring something out and what's the attitude that I have in the morning that's gonna help you or the boys all these things are adding up to what you're bringing to the table too and just being more conscious of that because that that was really tough and and I mean because it's ego too because it's like what about your feelings? What about mine? Like, you know what I've been doing, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah. it's like, I want to tell you what I've been doing and how my day is hard. And, um, and so that's, it's, it's taken some use to, to adjust. But what's so funny is that by you doing that, it tends to come back to you that yeah. I'm being, like, I got home yesterday. We had 
Let's just share share this because we're here amongst <laughs> friends and family. Friends. And I did share this on Instagram, by the way. Oh, my gosh. Um, so it was a great morning. You know, I'm working on this project that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we left early. Uh, yeah. You got out of the house so I could be, you know, free and just and just focus on this project. And I did a great meditation session. You know, mm, I hit it. I hit it hard. And, well, hard yet soft. Okay, I guess. Anyway, so I did that, did a little exercise, my little five-minute exercise, had listened to something, you know, inspirational, walked into the kitchen to, to have my Four Sigmatic. And as I walked by, the <laughs> sink in our kitchen literally fell through the counter and just collapsed and crashed. And then the pipe broke, water went everywhere. And I'm just standing there in soggy socks, like, what? Like my brain's trying to process fight or flight, you know, so I dive under the thing, try to shut the water off and, you know, just went and got towels and, you know, problem solved. We got everything fixed. It took a day or two, but there was so many dishes because we couldn't use the sink over those two days. And so I immediately came, yesterday was a lot, like it, did, it was a lot of stuff. And I picked up Brayden and I came home immediately, just went, like, I just felt it. I felt energized because of your support mm -hmm. and i just went in there and started knocking them dishes off you know that's right. and that's not my you know i'm not like it's not on my jersey like dish guy i mean your garçon's you know? on your jersey though, yeah garçon i'm the coffee it. i'm the coffee <laughs> server you know i'm the barista but you know like we generally like you know even the kids like Braden will do the dishes jordan does dishes you'll knock some out. i'll jump in there from time to time and help out but i just want i just felt like let me just make sure she feels good and feels more free when she comes in here, yeah. you know? And so that's what tends to happen when we support our partner's needs. It will tend to come back to us, it, but it does require a little bit of patience sometimes. Yeah. So let's move on. So folks that do follow me on Instagram, I'm at Sean Model on Instagram. And right now there's a little hiatus with us working out because our schedules are different for, for the time being, but I would, Often, you know, we'll show our, a lot of our workouts yeah. together, but so people are still asking about that because, you know, some folks don't follow me on Instagram. And so somebody in the group in the Model Nation asked, what do you like to do for workouts? So not just what do you do, what do you like, like to do? I to do. like and love to lift weights. I, um, I think it's such a great stress reliever. Mm. I... Um, to lift heavy and just to feel strong, especially when you have a tough day ahead or just dealt with the tough day, uh, to to do that and, and and push myself as much as I can. So obviously the deadlifts are, and that's been really great for my back uh, over the years, and, and just seeing how I can challenge myself with you know with with obviously the weight and and the power of it. Um, and you know, just all the great, like pull-ups, still working with the pull-ups. Uh, that's always a great challenge. Um, just anything to lifting has been great, but recently I switched up and slowed down a bit and, um, added hot yoga in the mix. Mm, yeah. And actually this was inspired by your talk at the biohacking conference, which by the way, if nobody, I mean, like you got to listen to him speak, like I've listened to you. I don't know, a bajillion times now. And every time it's like, first of all, you're funny every time. I don't know how, but like he's super funny. Oh my God. <laughs> but uh, I always get something new. And the other, what you were talking about was like really cross training, like trying different things. Cause you know, you're working. And, and so I just decided to add in high yoga. And what I found was just like, different muscle groups of like were sore than than before but most importantly I got that connection back that I was missing mm. of my mind and body yeah. that I mean I didn't even know how I, we've been going like a hundred miles an hour like it's been so crazy with I didn't even know I was stressed yeah. because it's just like I've been on reaction and to-do lists and just going, going. And just even if I'm still working at the gym, it's still kind of like hard. And, and, and but sometimes I feel just getting a little switch and doing something that is going to connect your mind and body, whatever it can be. It could be walking and listening to prayer, maybe, or um, just just taking so, uh, like a small breather and just chilling out a little bit has been super helpful to to 
to get the connection. So those mm. those are like my top two right now. Like I'm just I'm loving both of them. Mm. So good, so good. All right, thank you for sharing that. Thanks, Miss <laughs> Stevenson. Uh, next question. This one asks: How does she handle the holidays and not indulging too much with sweets, especially with our kids? Does your youngest son ask for candy? And how do you <laughs> teach them that even though it tastes amazing, it's really not that good for us? That's quite easy. I mean, uh, first, if I'm making the food, and which if you make great stuff with great products and like everything great, uh, it's kind of hard to to sway and, and eat something else. Because, again, like we say, if it's not in the house how can you want it and 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 on top of that if you're making really great stuff in the holidays when we we set the tone and it, in in the holidays we always set the tone of what's there with the food somehow some way that kind of would happen and um i set the precedent with showing how we can eat better and stuff can taste good i remember when we were doing raw food we made an entire Thanksgiving meal just raw food. Go bring that up. <laughs> I know. Yes. But but remember, I made the pies. Yeah. Uh, the, the pumpkin pies pie. Fire. It was raw, yeah. but it tasted. You couldn't even tell. Like it tastes like it was. You know, it was cooked. Um, and apple pies. So there have been ways of going around that and making delicious meals yeah. without that sacrifice. And in turn, with our son having access to them and tasting them like he automatically just loves it because at the end of the day they just want to eat great stuff so we we've never really had candy he's you know around he knows what it is but it took like years before he knew what it is uh but he never it's not a thing for him and it's not saying like he can't have it or won't have it because again i just don't we don't believe in restricting but we do believe in just like adding, adding the good stuff yeah. adding the good stuff we recently made the sweet potato muffins the other day yeah. and and he was obsessed like he didn't even want anybody to eat them oh man <laughs> yeah he was acting like was, he act like he pays the bills he did <laughs> I went to get a muffin. He was like, wait, oh, wait, wait, how many is there? <laughs> like, dude, seriously? <laughs> right. You know? But that's the thing is like swapping out and just upgrading just things. Upgrading. So it was, those are from Michael Morelli's book, Sweet yeah, Potato Sweet Diet. Potato Shout out to diet. Michael Morelli, who was on the show. We'll put that in the show notes for you guys too. And you, add, well, we added some carob chips, not chocolate mm -hmm. chips, some carob chips carob to chips. it. Or you could do, you know, some organic chocolate chips. So tasty. Yeah. And it's got that base of like their sweet potato in there. Sweet you know, potato so you a and we use like gluten, gluten free flour and yeah. everything. It was just, it was super simple recipe. And he, and also another thing was just him, uh, you, my son assisting in making the food, like making the, the muffins. Um, at my mom's, he makes the, the brownies, which is, I think it's like keto brownies. And, and so he's involved in the process and he loves to take that to, to school. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I think involving them in the process and adding good stuff. So yeah. we don't necessarily like take it away. If he goes to a party and might ends up having a candy, cool, not a big deal. It's cool. But majority, 95% of the time, he's having great stuff. And one little thing to add to that is our inner intelligence too. You mm -hmm. know, like he's been having real food his whole life. And so he's had experiences of like what it feels like when you have too much ice cream. Yeah. You know, and it became like a like he was suffering, <laughs> you know. <laughs> he just kept going for it. And then those moments I'm like, okay, I'm going to let him see. You know, I remember we were at Yaya's, you know, one of our favorite restaurants. Yeah. And, you know, he, he kept digging into the ice cream and, you know, he had a little bit of a bellyache. And it's mm -hmm. just like relating mentally, like, okay, it's tasty. Like, I've never had that before when I have that much. So let me just be cool, not have too much because, you know, that body intelligence is there. But when we got like, you know, chili cheese nachos from 7-Eleven on top of, you know, McDonald's, whatever milkshake, it's not yeah. even milk. <laughs> It's a milk fake. And, you know, like all those things that I really kind of grew up on, I don't notice when I have something that's not necessarily beneficial for my body, you know? So it's just that body intelligence that evolves over time. And you brought up the raw food. This is another thing, guys, like and part of the Model Health Show is that I've taken time and, you know, I've been in this field like 
17 years and like I'll t years at a time I'll experiment with stuff you know like if we're talking about keto like I did it for a long time or paleo right. or raw food and we had that mushroom loaf I think oh for Thanksgiving goodness. yeah and everybody it's that after effect of the bathroom <laughs> the next day yeah you know was, you're intense. welcome it's like it's a it Thanksgiving was, cleanse yeah, you it get was a Thanksgiving you know cleanse, for sure. so yeah we've been through a lot of stuff but yeah so we, we're gonna hit one more question sure then I'll let you go from this recording, but I'm not actually gonna let you go okay. at all, <laughs> all right? So final question from our group, again, themodelhealthshow.com forward slash model nation, all right? And get into our private community, all right? Come and hang out with us, all right? Meet some great people there, some, some new friends, talk about the show, access to some behind the scenes stuff. It's, it's really, really cool. And so the final question, this from Amber in the group, shout out to Amber. And she asked about, do you have any tips on staying true to your personal goals and mission while balancing marriage and family? That's such a great question. And it's super loaded. Um, so try and put it in parts. Uh, the first thing is realizing there are seasons. And um, if you've not heard of that yet, you should, is you have there are seasons in your life. So... If you have a little baby or if you're pregnant, um, you have a teenager in the house or um, obviously like us, we have the seven year old. Uh, so there, there are different seasons that we are always going through. And in each season, you need something different. So I would suggest first is all the inspiration tips that we've heard, you know, if it's online, podcast, whatever it might be taking those that actually work for you and and adding those in. So it might be, you know, hearing like, I need to work out in the morning, but guess what? Morning might not work out for me. It might be later on in the day that actually feels good to me and it's actually working with my schedule because of whatever practice and that type of thing. So I, I think seasons, we got to determine what seasons yeah. we're in because that also affects our goals because I can think of the first few years of my, of, of Brayden's life. I mean, I didn't, everything was just all about him and you guys and just, you know, just keeping everybody healthy and, and, and everything working in, in its perfect unity. And in there, I started to add in a little bit more of the working out in my mindset. And we talked about that in past episodes where obviously it seemed like I quote unquote, let myself go. But in reality, I was focused on one thing because the truth is, truth is guys, like we can only be focused on one thing really at a time. Yes, we might have a second and third but truly, there's always one thing that's like right there. So my fitness goals kind of came in a little bit later once <laughs> my boy was a little bit more self-sufficient, you know, and the, the sleep pattern and all those things that were working. I mean, there somebody who is newly married and has a new business, you're in a new season. However, it's like which one's one of them is going to take precedent over the other. Okay. Your marriage or your business? Because you have to, which obviously, if you listen to the Model Health Show, we know obviously building that relationship first so yeah. it can support when you really anchoring this new business. Because we can get all that success over here, but if your relationship is suffering, you are suffering as well. So when we determine that, well, how I did is determining my seasons and, and being okay, being okay if certain things are not up to par of what I want them because I know, okay, I'm going to get to that next quarter. Or even you can divide your year in like the four quarters and seeing, okay, which each quarter, what am I going to focus on? And it's never going to be perfect I mean, literally, you just heard the story with <laughs> with the sink caving in and and I had like a whole plan for that day and it's kind of trickled off to a different part of the the week that I like, you know, I wish I had more stuff done. But what are my five things which I'm proud of? If I go to bed right now, it, I'm content. I feel like, you know what? I did good today. OK, the, the kitchen was a mess. 
However, I did work out. Mm-hmm. I put in some work in with with our new site, by the way, and um, I got the laundry done. And so I got I got my my wins in. And if I lay in at the end of the day, how does that feel to me? And I might not get everything done, but the most important things have been accomplished. And the truth is, we need help. We need help in every aspect. We're not like back in the day where, I mean, back in the day where, you know, all our families lived close by each other, where they can come take care of the kids, or you can have date night and drop them off here. It's like, we're kind of in a little island, all of us, uh, and those who are fortunate to have like the mother-in-law and all these it, to step in. It's it's such a blessing because it takes a lot of stress out. And so I encourage, like I encourage a lot of my friends. Like she knows, I encourage to get help to hire, getting a housekeeper, um, and getting a laundry service. I recently found the laundry service situation, and it's been just phenomenal and and it's like for such a low price like I couldn't believe it but these things alleviate that part in our head where it's like a checkbox that's continues I need to get this done because we're trying to get to this goals and my mission but we can't do that if my house is messy there's clutter in the closet and and yet I I still got to spend some time with my husband and go and talk over the hard thing that we haven't talked about so it's like a lot of things. And if we get a little bit more help towards the house and the housekeeping thing, it's, you know, I, I used to battle and I used to be even embarrassed. And my mom knows, of, like, I, I would lie <laughs> when the housekeeper would come. I didn't tell my mom for months because I didn't want to seem like, um, you know, I don't know, bougie or something. <laughs> like, I can't handle my house. But the truth is, no. I, there's so many things that we're doing and also yeah. and I've been blessed to have a partner who you who you okay with that like you understood my pressures yes I'm at home but that doesn't mean like I also have time to do everything you and my to roles run every, you yeah. make this possible like we wouldn't even be sitting here if it wasn't for you so yeah yeah it's been a game changer and every successful woman that I've talked to mom that's the first step is getting help. They all have help. Uh, I remember when we went to dinner with Jamie, like all these successful women, and, and we, we were sitting there and, and they found out that I, I don't have Instacart, nor do I have laundry help. And they just gasped like, are you serious? You got to get all these things handled because we can't do it all. It's just a myth. We can't do it all. We can do one thing or let's say three things at our best. And then the rest things can follow into the next quarter and being patient with ourselves, just really being patient and and kind to ourselves when we don't accomplish it. Cause we'll get it next time. Yeah. We'll get it. Oh wow, you will. You will. You've been getting it. It's just been really amazing. These like you think that things can't get better in a sense. Like, man, it's just yeah. really good. But I think that this is and just speaks to even with the relationships and and I'm so grateful if, if and, we, and I do receive these great messages, you know, but for me, if we can just demonstrate what's possible, that's really what the Model Health Show is and helping people to create their own model because it's going to have different flavors of all of this stuff. And even though I'm in love with our relationship, we're still working on how can we make it better? Like it's, it's, yeah. it's kind of like when you work out and you get yourself to a place of fitness and then you stop, you know, because somebody's like, you're done. Why are you at the gym working <laughs> out? You're clearly finished. You've, <laughs> you've made it. You're good. You do that to maintain or even get better, you know, because there's always another level, right? So us reading the five love languages now, or mm-hmm. I'm re- re- revisiting it. And just like anything in life, if it's important to you, you've got to make it a study. Yeah. Um, and lastly, just want to say, I think with... Um the kind of world we're living with in and with the social media and like constantly getting all this input it, it's we live in a fast-paced world where it's just like you know beginning and and we see the result the before and after and and these relationship goals and like this is the end truth is there is you know we conquer 
a, a part of our life. And then it's like we have to we go on to the next phase where it's like, OK, we we either are making it better or we find out like, whoa, you actually don't have a handle. Like I thought I had the fear of failure handled mm. when um, I did the home birth. Like I just thought I was this warrior, like, OK, I got the handle. But no, there was still some aspects to it, but also having the willingness when we self-reflect and and like you said, like making a study and going back in, going back in the lab, because, you know, the, the marathon continues. Mm, come on now, <laughs> baby. Listen, um, just to share this, you really do inspire me every day. You are my coach, even though you don't necessarily see yourself as these, as these things. My inspiration, my you've got my back and I feel it. Uh, you're there. You're like, you're my everything. You know, like we experience life together and but we also experience it through two different sets of eyes and I love your eyes I love the way that you see things and that didn't just happen because um it's it's natural like I decided to really enjoy you and to enjoy your perspective and I'm just grateful that you continue to give uh so much of yourself and your insights and share your voice with me it's one of the best things in the universe yeah. so thank you babe no, th thank you for having me and always pushing me because here I am. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you. I, I, I take it. I take it in. Awesome. I receive it. Yes, yes, yes. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in to the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And she really closed this thing out really well. Uh, the only thing that I want to just reiterate is understanding that there's seasons to everything. You know, and just being aware of what season you might be in. Because sometimes also, especially with social media, we'll start to compare our season that we're into other people's seasons. You know, we'll, con we'll compare our chapter one in our story to somebody else's chapter 13. And it's really understanding that all of these things are processed. And we, we're in different types of books in different parts of our lives. You know, in one area of your life, you might have like, it might be encyclopedia. Like, I, I got the smarts. Another level of your life, it might be whatever for dummies right? And it's just acknowledging like there's these different places in our lives, there's different levels, different seasons, and n understanding that there is time to have patience, but also persistence. And that's really the balance. That's, that's what grace is. And so really operating with more grace and acknowledgement of your greatness. And if you got a lot of value out of this episode, please share it out with everybody on social media. Add some positivity out there with your friends and family, and you can tag me of course, I'm at Sean Model on Instagram. And on Facebook, we're at The Model Health Show. And of course, I'll make sure the end checks it out as well and, and gets your feedback and your comments. The best place, again, I've shared this several times, the, the community, all right? The new Model Health Show community, Model Nation. Go to themodelhealthshow.com forward slash Model Nation and request access to the group. You got to answer some questions. We got to make sure about that life. All right. I appreciate you so much for tuning into the show today. And I hope that you have an incredible day ahead, the best day ever. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.